All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Kevin again with Yerker Racing. Uh, we're back for another one today. We're going to be working with the Analyx 3030 Evo Pro. We'll probably throw the um, eighth inch single flute bit in there and we'll start making a couple of cuts. Um, see if we can actually do the profile for um, our time and pointer bracket and our pointer itself. Anyway, let's get it. All right, so jumping right in, this is the pointer itself. We got our um, Yurkit Racing logo. This is our bracket. Got all the tool path laid out for this one. And like I said, hopefully it'll all go good. Let's jump in and try it. Okay guys, so the next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually get over into cutting some aluminum. Uh, it's a piece of scrap from the garage. As you can tell, it's not exactly flat, so we're gonna try to mill it flat. To start with, I don't have a I have a vise on order for it, but I don't have it yet. So in order to get this done, uh, we're going to try this tape method that I've seen people using. Um, you use tape and some CA glue, and supposedly it holds. So basically, all we're going to do is glue the two tape surfaces together um, like that. Okay. And then this will be our kind of stock board that we will actually use um, this on top of. You know, we'll do the same thing. Tape here, tape here, and glue that to that. So we'll have glue holding that board down and glue holding this to the board. And then that way it'll give us a spoil board. You know, in case we cut too deep, it won't cut into our table. Uh, but hopefully this tape and glue method will hold. Okay, so... This is the uh, glue here that we're using. You basically put this on one side of it, you spray this on the other side, and then you press them together and it's supposed to be almost instant light. It says holds in three seconds, so we'll see. Alright, so that's that. And then we'll just give a little bit of the Spray there for the activator. Alright, now we're just going to press down on that. And it seems so far so good anyway. Put it that way. Okay, so our next thing is going. Shit, look what I did. Yeah, well, if you're paying attention, you can see what I did here. I was supposed to put the daggone stuff on the on this tape. I put it on the board instead by accident. So anyway, <laughs> it'll it'll come up. I'll just have to get it up off the bottom. It probably is never that tape's never coming off of that board though. All right, so we have our aluminum. Just gonna rub it in, get everything nice and tacked up. Another thing is. This is like the extra hold uh, painter's tape. It's kind of heavy duty stuff. Got uh, made for rough surfaces. It's got a lot of holding force uh, compared to a lot of it. So I do think that that will probably aid in holding the workpiece like we need it to. Um, so again, we're just going to kind of apply this. Like that. Spray this. Like that. And then when we turn this over, essentially there, and press hold for three seconds. And is locked in place. Okay. So we'll see how well that actually ends up holding. Um, right now we still have the engraving bit in there. I've got to swap that out. Uh, we got the brand new single flute end mills in. So we're going to get ready to put that in there and see if we can cut some. Let's try it. Right. 
Okay, so we got the correct end mill in now. Let's get ready to see if we can set this thing up. Okay, so we have our uh, tool path and everything loaded in the candle. And we're getting ready to try to make a pass on it. Okay, so that looks pretty good on the, le on the uh, X and Y axis. So we're going to zero that there. We're going to bring Z up. And I'm going to go over here to this part where it's a little thicker. Alright, we'll zero that right there for our Z axis. And then we are going to start running. Fingers crossed, this works like it's supposed to. Okay, so for some reason, we broke a bit just now. I'm not sure if we got trying to take too big of a bite or quite what the problem is, but uh, we got to look into that a little bit. Hopefully that doesn't become a recurring theme. We cut the high sections down last night on our stock metal. We're getting ready to try to make a cut on the actual part now. Um, we're going to be cutting this here. I've already got it transferred over here to this computer. This will be the one that we're actually using to run it so I can still have the other computer operational. Uh, hoping we got everything set up the way we need it and we should al already have our coordinates in for home and everything so we're just going to hit send and see if we can get started here that ain't right <laughs> nope god almighty make you scratch it. this thing make it pull your hair out man if I had hair left I'd pull it out Alright, so I just went through about two hours of trying to figure out what the problem was. I think I have possibly figured it out. Um, I'm just going to try to run it and then we'll talk about maybe what it was. <laughs> well, that sucked. As you can see, that did not go according to plan at all all right guys so we fixed one problem created another one um, definitely solved the issue of the spindle going all the way to the top and limiting out on the z-axis now we've got another problem where I can only assume that it's the depth of cut is too much um, so we got to go in try to play with that hopefully figure out a solution because that one did not work and it didn't work in a hurry Alright, so now, hypothetically, I should just be able to send it. Is it ready now? Should be in a minute. Did I say you to get that? Alright, this seems like attempt number 4,552 or something about along those lines. Alright, it's the next day. Um, we're going to attempt to do this thing again. Having a lot of issues with breaking bits right now. Really just trying to figure out the speeds and feeds and what types of tool paths to be using. Steep learning curve, I must say that. Um, very, very in, like a whole lot of uh, variables at play that are making this 
a, you know, kind of hard to just pick up on if you don't have anybody really to help you figure it out. Um, anyway, but we're going to keep at it. I think we can get it. It's just a matter of trying to figure out the perfect combination for the machine. Um, I do know that Analyx has a upgrade kit to put it to a uh, 1.5 kilowatt spindle that'll do 24,000 RPMs. This one is a uh, 300 watt, 10,000 RPM spindle. Looking at some speed and feed charts on the 8th inch bits here, uh, looks like for optimal chip load and everything, we would really need to be able to run a single flute which is what style end mill we're running. Um, looks like we would need to be able to run that probably in the um, closer to 20,000 RPM range to really be able to get the optimal load for it. So I don't know if that's part of the issue or what. Um, so in order to counteract our lack of spindle speed, I'm going to take a shallower cut, uh, basically cutting it in half from twenty thousandths of an inch each pass step down to ten thousand uh... ten thousandths of an inch so that's what we've done now i also if you see over here on this side i changed it from where we had an outer perimeter of our holes and trying to cut a basically a tunnel or um, a little a little um, contour path I've changed it over to a pocket style where it's just going to mill the whole pocket out of it. I'm hoping, um, I think the last time it seemed to actually be cutting decent, but we ended up having um, the bit I actually think got bound up in there, which I mean I need to do a better job of having, you know, some air or something that we can blow out this. Uh, I'm going to get all that set up. I'm probably going to end up putting a nozzle on it, you know, just to blow the chips away or either, I know they, they also make um, you can 3D print or probably even buy one from somewhere, but they have the fans that slide up on the collet nut. So options there, we need to get the chips evacuated, I know, because right now a lot of them are wanting to just fall back in the slot, and that's probably bind. Now, last time I think it probably would have cut it, but it was binding up um, because of that. Like I, It started out doing pretty good up at the top side of it. So anyway, that's where we're at. I'm going to go ahead and attempt again this time ten thousands on a pocket cut and hopefully this thing will actually cut it let's try it So that turned out pretty nice. Um, took a long time with the settings we had in place, uh, but it did actually cut it, and we did not break a bit. That thing, I think it took about uh, six hours and some change to cut what you see there. So definitely not a speed demon by any stretch of the imagination at this point, but we're going to keep playing with the feeds and speeds and everything and see if we can uh, start turning this thing up. At least we got a baseline now where we know that we're not going to be breaking those little bits. Um, at, at that speed so we can work up from there uh, we're getting ready now to jump back over we're going to open up the next file should be our step two and it's going to be the outer perimeter cut uh, so we're going to go ahead and send that to the machine and we'll get started all right, guys, I really hope you're enjoying the video. Just want to take a second to invite you over to Yurkit Racing Spread Shop, where you can find all sorts of merchandise. You name it, it's probably in there. So go over, find you something you like. Every order you place on this site is great. <laughs> okay, so I did not like that. Uh, hopefully, that's all it was, was I didn't zero it out. Ah, we'll give it a shot here. We'll see. Hopefully it goes correct. Let's let's try it out. Okay, so it's looking better to start with. Just kind of ramping down into it. 
Yeah, so note to self, always probe the Z-axis before starting. Alright, got our first touchdown over there. Seemed to cut pretty smooth. Alright, so it's just working down to the part now. Um, barely getting any cut so far, but what it has cut, it seems to be doing pretty smooth. Uh, last time for all the inside stuff, we ran it at one, uh, 0.1 millimeter step over and a 0.1 millimeter step down. This time um, I sped it up to 0.15 millimeter step over and step down. So hopefully it'll still cut as smooth and we won't run into any issues with the tool wanting to break. Uh, we'll kind of see how that goes in a minute. But hoping that this way, if we can cut at this speed, it'll definitely cut hours off of the time. I mean, small micro changes, you're only talking about close to two thousandths change in each direction so hopefully that won't be enough to mess us up and uh, it'll speed the process up by a lot. Alright so we got through down here in this little spot um, but not quite through on the rest of the pass. You can see it's starting to break and it may be enough on the edges to have broke through um, to where it'll actually separate. Really needed to probably go another you know couple thousands down and it would have cleared it the rest of the way up so I'll have to make the adjustment in the file for the next cut um, that we do. But now we're gonna move on to the facing operation at least it just looks like a black blob over here right now with all the tool paths up there but we're going to uh, run that one now and then that should be ready to start flipping after that.